It's really interesting to see how the Sea of Galilee is so calm again today. How is your heart? Is it stormy like yesterday or is it calm like the Sea of Galilee? Your disposition, your, your attitude. And obviously there are all kinds of potential reasons why a heart can be very troubled. But there are also amazing situations of difficulty where hearts can be very serene and peaceful. Do you have some way to prove who you are? Even to prove to yourself. Your deepest identity. Where is the true peace? All the kingdoms of the earth fail. And the more they're built on sand, the more they fail. And the more they're built on great principles of justice, the more they succeed. Justice is really giving to everything what its due is. There is somebody still enjoying the sunrise. Most of the people went back in who were out here a few minutes ago. All of the readings are in totally the same type of uh, tone, uh, theme, topic today. All of them including the way the psalm is arranged with the responsorial, which is inspired by the gospel. But the reading from Zephaniah the prophet. And the second reading is also impressive because normally the second reading doesn't fit in. The first reading and the gospel match up. The first reading is chosen to to uh, emphasize the gospel reading. So we look at Zephaniah today and he's speaking to all the humble of the earth. All the humble of the earth. People humble and lowly who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord.
and there'll be no more wrong done, no more lies, no more violence, no more murders, no more cheating, no more injustice. <clears throat> Zephaniah is <clears throat> teaching about the poor, the humble, the lowly, is very interesting. There are some scholars who, who want to say that Matthew's Gospel of the Beatitudes, which we have today, is a further development and a spiritualization of the account of Luke. And I'm not on the level to debate with all of them, but it's already present in in Zephaniah. There's a, a kingdom coming. There's we can't produce everything. And really, the Corinthians letter is very, and that's also earlier than Matthew's gospel, most likely. Although there's all kinds of debates about these things, you know. We don't have to lose sleep over them. They're interesting. And the very powerful line today really cuts across all the readings, the one we have in the second reading. God shows the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing. I turned off the Wi-Fi. We had a little glitch there, but I don't know what the cause of it was. God shows the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, so that no human being might boast before God. You see, that's probably the key of the issue, the key issue is how we take over the reality that's given to us. We take it over as possessors and not just as entrusted with gifts. And when we take it over as possessors, then we, we act as lords. And we even lord it over people. Maybe even that could happen among spouses. To people who have given their hearts to each other. But at the moment that somebody begins to lord it over the other, then that whole first love is is uh, very broken. The humble of the earth, the lowly. So this is about an attitude and heart. You know, Moses was the great leader. And the praise that's given to him is that he was the humblest man on the face of the earth. Man of great modesty and humility. That probably came also through his immediate direct encounter with God. A man of extraordinary prayer. And that was given to him. It's not something that he could make. But obviously he responded to that gift. We also have that spirit in Job. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So
So this deep spiritual attitude about life, that life and my kingdom in this world is not material. My kingdom in this world is a relationship with God. And that relationship can be tried and tested through many, many difficulties. can be horribly tested and horribly tried. And so we're already by the spirit of the Gospels. When Jesus saw the crowd, he went up a mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those are the humble ones, the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Theirs is peace. Theirs is contentment, they have their true identity. Blessed are they who mourn, who are suffering now, who are deeply dissatisfied for various reasons. They will be comforted. They will have the kingdom of heaven. They will have peace. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth, not the ones with the guns and the tanks and more tanks. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And there's plenty of, of need for that in the world today. And longing for justice justice before God. All of the destruction of human life in so many different moments of life. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Sometimes we have that tremendous urge to take revenge. We get angry with the broken people who have done wrong. Somebody can get angry with an old person who forgot to, tie, to, tie, to do something. I asked you to do that. child, angry with the parent, angry with everybody. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers. And then the toughest ones are, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. I'm not just sitting in my couch and noticing injustice, but I myself am bearing persecution and to be blessed in the midst of persecution and there are such people these are the Olympics these are the Nobel Prizes of humanity in the sense of true authentic humanity not for chemistry and not for hello good morning quack 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 Quack, 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 quack. These are the ones. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Good morning. Quack, 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 quack. 
quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. We're right close now, just about four feet away from them. Look at the green in that, that lady's duck in the, her feathers. Amazing color, isn't it? These ones don't have any color yet. Sorry about that, people. They're getting a little color there now. Open up your wings, lady. That's not going to happen now. Nice reflection there of the of this goose in the water. Egyptian geese. So we leave it like that for today, people. Here at Mount Arbel, Sea of Galilee. God bless you. I'm going to try a selfie with the ducks, with the geese.